This is my Voron 0.2 that we recently looked at when we upgraded from the mini stealth burner to the dragon burner tool head. I've really been enjoying the setup and having the extruder easily accessible, larger cooling fans, and RGB LEDs are all a nice inclusion. I've been wanting to upgrade the stock bed to the Kirigami bed, and I've had one of these sitting here for a lot longer than I'm proud to admit. Every time Maple Leaf Maker's video covering the install has popped up in my feed, it's almost given me the push I need to finally do this, but procrastination has persisted. Until now. During a recent live stream, my buddy Shammy from XR Bunker let me know he had a couple of new PCBs that he wanted to send my way for future projects. One of them, called the Kirigami UFO by Live and Hack, is a crazy two-part board that gives you an umbilical setup for the bed, eight addressable RGB LEDs, and an optional fan mount. This was the nudge I needed to finally get this bed swapped out. In this video, we'll take a look at each of these mods and go through what's involved with getting them installed as we continue what I'm dubbing the Pimp My Voron series. So with all that being said and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Thank you to PCBWay for sponsoring today's video. With over a decade of experience, PCBWay offers reliable, high-quality PCB prototyping and fabrication with super fast turnaround times. Bring your projects to life with CNC machining, 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication, and injection molding services. I recently ordered 20 PCBs to use for an upcoming Nerf-inspired blaster project that I've been wanting to build for years. With as few as 5 and as many as 10,000 board order quantities, PCBWay has you covered for any project, big or small. Use the link in the description to get a $5 credit towards your first order today. Starting with the Kirigami bed. For anyone not familiar, this alternative to the V0 stock bed was created by Christoph Mueller and is a single piece of metal that's cut and bent to shape. It's stiff, lightweight, looks great, and simplifies the bed assembly. Some of the kits, like the one from LDO, include a NeoPixel PCB for the front plate and a pair of Wagos for the bed wires. The UFO Kirigami mod I assume gets its name from the 8 NeoPixels on the bottom of the bed PCB. Having this attached to your bed and lit up looks very spaceshipy, especially as the bed climbs from the bottom up to the top when it's going to start a print. It also sort of illuminates the rails and bottom portion of the printer. Combined with a secondary breakout board, this is also an umbilical upgrade for your bed wires. Unlike the two Wagos for the bed heater and thermistor, you get a 10 pin microfit connector that will run your thermistor, heater, NeoPixel power, data in and out, as well as an optional fan that can be mounted on the PCB below the bed. This lets you quick disconnect the bed if needed for future maintenance, repairs, or upgrades. So what goes into installing this into your V0? Well, if you haven't already built your V0 and you're planning ahead for upgrades, this is definitely one of those upgrades or mods that I would recommend installing at the time of initially building your printer. Part of the reason I put off the Kirigami bed upgrade for so long was that I was dreading having to disassemble the printer to get it installed. There are really two ways to remove the stock bed. The first method, which is what I went with, is disassembling the printed parts from the Z linear rails. This is probably the more tedious way of doing things as it required detaching my controller and removing the back panel to gain access to the screws holding the bed assembly in place. The second method and the one covered by Maple Leaf Makers has you remove the Z rails from the vertical Z extrusions and then disassemble the bed. Removing the linear rails is going to be the less destructive route to go, but I have some serious PTSD from the first V0 build that I did, where one of the Z bearing blocks actually fell off of the rail, and I lost a handful of the bearings, and I just wasn't ready to face my fears with this upgrade. In all serious, as long as you've got rail stops or zip ties so that way the bearing block cannot fall off of the rail, that is the method I recommend doing and it's just going to be the easier route. When it came time to print out the parts for this mod, I had a bit of confusion. For the Kirigami bed, had I just scrolled down instead of jumping directly to the SDL folder, it does have it all laid out. For the V0.2, just print out all the parts listed under the V0.2 parts section. 
I goofed on the nut block and ended up printing out the version for the V0 or V0.1, but physically they're the exact same and the only difference is the V0 and V0.1 version has a extra M3 hole on top because you use a screw to trigger the limit switch, while on the V0.2 they've completely changed that where now your linear bearing actually goes down and hits the limit switch on the bottom. So functionally it works just the same, I just have an extra hole in the back here that you can't even really see. For the UFO mod, I needed everything under the STL section other than the chain link lid. There's another folder called optional containing files for the front bed cover with an LED diffuser and lid, as well as bed fan mounting options. This is where most of my confusion came in with printing out these parts. I printed the front parts out and discovered that this was intended for someone using a WS2812 NeoPixel in the same form factor as the ones that come in the Stealth Burner. Since I was using a larger PCB with a JST connector, I had to print out a different front plate and diffuser. I found these in the supplemental print guide for the LDO V0.2 S1 kit. For the fans, I tried all three mounting options and none of them worked. The first two bumped into the LEDs, and even the one that's just pegs that are supposed to go through the fan so that you can thread into them didn't fit. When I spoke to the project creator, they let me know that those ring fan mounts or the fan mounts were designed for the V1 variant of this, which was before the LEDs were added to the PCB. I ended up just using some M3 nuts, which worked really well, and that's what I recommend at least until there's an update to support the V2 board. Once I had all the parts printed out, assembling everything on the Kirigami bed wasn't too difficult. I was excited to see that there were quite a few heat inserts, which meant I got to use the stealth press that we assembled on stream just a couple of weeks ago. Both mods also have step files available, so I imported them into Shaper 3D and referenced them a handful of times as I put everything together. By far the most time consuming part of this install is the crimping. The umbilical cord uses a 5x2 microfit connector for each side of it, and although I've done a bit of crimping for them before, it has been a while. Also, this V0.2 kit started off as the standard Cyborg V0.2 kit, and the cable chain does not open, so some of them will have a little latch you can just kind of take a flathead and pry open. Well, this doesn't have that option, so I had to crimp one end of the cable, feed all the wires through the chain, and then crimp the other end of that microfit connector. This meant I was doing a fair bit of probing with my multimeter to make sure I was connecting each wire to the right port of the connector. Hopefully your cable chain opens, so that way you can just do all of your crimping on both ends, create your wire harness, and then basically just put it through that cable chain. I didn't see it right away, but in the GitHub repository for the UFO mod, there are images containing the pinout for each PCB with the traces clearly visible. I found this really helpful as a reference when creating my harness. I would love an official wire harness for this mod since the V0s all have roughly the exact same footprint and this is going to be installed in the same place. It wouldn't be that difficult for somebody to create a sort of one size fits all for this where you've got your micro fit ready to rock and roll so that way you're just installing, plugging it in and plugging it in on the other end. And I think that it would make this mod more accessible, especially for those that aren't super comfortable with doing a whole bunch of crimping. Once you've got the Kirigami installed and your wires ran to the back of the machine, the breakout board mounted in the back is straightforward to install. Other than plugging in the other end of your microfit, you'll need to connect the bed heater, thermistor, a fan, and a NeoPixel from your controller to this board so that it can feed it through your wire harness. And that's really it for the physical install. As far as your config goes, you don't need to update anything for the thermistor or the heater bed. If you did decide to add a fan, then you will need to define it and decide whether you want it to be one that you manually turn on or if you want it to auto kick on when something like the bed heater is active. I made a full video dedicated to different fan types and options for Clipper firmware that I'll have linked in the description below. For the NeoPixels, there are an endless number of ways that you can set these up. You can have them all be the same color, all different colors, respond to different printer statuses, or go full party mode. Adam from Vector3D made a detailed video covering all things lighting and clipper that covers the LEDFX plugin that I highly recommend watching. I used that to set up all of the gradient effects across all NeoPixels on this printer. Bed fans are something I've heard talked about a bit to help preheat the chamber quicker when you're printing with a more warp prone material. 
I've never used one, so I was curious to see if it actually made much of a difference. To check this, I added a chamber sensor to my V0 and printed out Maple Leaf Maker's V0 mount to attach the thermistor to the top of my Z extrusion. Then I homed the bed to the very bottom and set the bed to 100 Celsius. I let it climb to 100 C with the fan off and checked the temp in the chamber, then I let it fully cool down before doing it again with the fan on. The difference was only a couple Celsius and not anything substantial. Talking to the creator of the mod, he had a few ideas with one of them being to flip the direction of the fan so that way the heat is blowing upwards versus the sort of default layout that it shows in the mod which has the air blowing down. I need to try this and I also know a few others that use sort of a starting macro that heat soaks the chamber for 30 minutes based off of sort of what slicing parameters they have set. So that's something I'd like to try as well to see 10 minutes is not a very long time. And during that 10 minutes, I mean, eight minutes of it, the bed was just climbing in temperature. So it would be interesting to see maybe with flipping the fan and having an additional 20 minutes at the bed being at 100 C or 110 C, if we start to see more of a difference between the fan being on and the fan being off. So what are my thoughts on these mods? Well, starting with the Kirigami bed, I definitely like it over the stock bed configuration. It's a simpler assembly thanks to the unibody design, and I like that it attaches just from the front so you'll never need to access the back. So the whole me having to remove the back panel to reach those bolts holding the stock setup in place would not be an issue. I would just need to remove the four screws holding it to the linear rails and I could take the entire thing out. Like I mentioned earlier, ideally this is a mod that I recommend installing at the time of first building this printer, but if you go the route of pulling the linear rails, then it's really not that bad to swap if you need to do so after the fact. As for the UFO mod, if you're already doing the Kirigami mod, it is a fun little add-on for it. The umbilical setup makes removing the bed as easy as disconnecting the one cable, and if you're a sucker for LEDs like me, that might be enough reason in itself to pick up this board. I'm still not totally convinced there's much benefit for having that bed fan, but there are a handful of variables I need to play around with to see if I can make it a bit more effective. Just be sure you are comfortable with crimping before you decide to pick up this mod. I'm really happy with how this turned out and combined with the Dragon Burner, this feels like a completely different printer. I have plans for one last round of mods on this printer that I am looking forward to showing off in a future video before I think I'm ready to call this V0 done. Let me know in the comments down below what your thoughts are on the Kirigami bed and the UFO mod. The Kirigami bed has been out for quite a while, but I am curious to know how many before watching this video had actually heard of the UFO mod for it. If you want to pick up either the bed or the board, I will have links to both available in the description below. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel further, I will have links below in the description over to our Patreon, where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Dana from ModBot. I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.